This is the next in a series of videos looking at the graphs of parabolas resulting from quadratic functions. In a previous video, we noticed that there were going to be six characteristics that we would hope to discover. Uh, in this video, we'll look at the y-intercept and the vertex. Finding the y-intercept is particularly easy, as it is for any function. The, y, the, x, the y-intercept will be found by picking x to be 0 and just finding out what the function is at 0. A number of quick observations makes it obvious why this is true. By definition, the y-intercept is the y-value of the point where the function crosses the y-axis. Okay, A point is on the y-axis if and only if it has an x-value of 0, and so therefore if f of 0 is defined for a function, whatever function it is, then it is the y-intercept. This concept works for any function. It's also very easy to state how to find the vertex of a quadratic function. Suppose that we have the quadratic function y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. Then the vertex is this point where the x value is minus b divided by 2a then of course we can find the y value just by putting that x value into the function. Of course it's important to know this fact, but the more significant issue is knowing why this tells us where the vertex is. Why is the vertex at a minus b over 2a? To explain why that, that uh, formula works for finding the vertex, we need to observe some properties about a uh, quadratic function. The graph of a quadratic function is a parabola. We had a mental image that it either looks very much like a string hung between two points or it looks like a water fountain. That's the shape of parabolas. Parabolas are very symmetrical. If a vertical line is drawn through the vertex of either an opening up or an opening down parabola, then the parabola is symmetric about that line. Now these two other properties will be listed in the handout, but let's look at them in a little more detail. So these other two properties will be listed in the handout. Let's look at them in a little more detail. We'll use as our example this particular quadratic function. Here's the vertex of the function, and there's the line of symmetry. Now let's pick an arbitrary point on the function, on the graph then we could easily measure the distance from that point to this line of symmetry. Notice that when I move that point closer to the vertex, that distance becomes less. So I move it further away from the vertex, it becomes greater. We could look at a point on the other branch of the parabola. And similarly, its distance becomes smaller as it gets closer to the uh, uh, vertex and it gets larger as it moves further away. If we happen to move these two points so their y value is the same, so they're at the same height, then this distance, they will be equidistant from that line of symmetry. We're going to be particularly interested in seeing what happens when uh, this point happens to be the y-intercept and that this is at that exact same height. So we're going to take these four observations about this related to the symmetry and, and these distance issues to be able to identify where the vertex is. So taking an odd, arbitrary quadratic function of the form y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c we want to, to begin by remembering that the y-intercept is y is equal to c. That is, 0c is a point on the parabola. In this function that we were looking at earlier, notice that uh, the, here, here's what the function was. And when, uh, when y is equal to 2, that is the, the y-intercept. 0, 2 is the y-intercept. Now what we're going to do is try and find this other point 
where what x value gives this same value of 2 for the y. So let me bring in a little uh, scratch pad so that we can talk about solving this equation. So remembering what we were looking at here, when x is 0, then f of 0 happens to be 2. There's the 0, 2 point, which is, a, uh, which is the y-intercept. So what we did so far is we found out what the value of the function was when x was 0. That gave us this y-intercept. And what we're going to look for is, is there another time that there's some x value so that we get this same y value of c out. So we replace the y with c, and we have the equation c is equal to ax squared plus b. So let's subtract c from both sides of this equation. What we're looking for are all the x's that make the y value equal to c. That leaves us with this quadratic equation. In another video, we'll look at the details of solving quadratic equations. But this particular quadratic equation is very easy to solve because we can factor out an x. Because of the zero product property, there are two possibilities here. We've got two numbers that multiply together to give us zero. So either one of those numbers could be zero. So we started with this equation saying that if, if y is equal to c, then when could ax squared plus bx plus c equal c? We got this quadratic equation. We factored out the x. So either x could be 0 or ax plus b could be 0. Now, a being equal to 0 is not a surprise for us. Remember, that's where we begin. We begin with saying if x is 0, then the y value is c. That happens to be the, uh, the y-intercept. But now we're going to find this other value over here that also makes it 0. So we subtract a b from both sides of this second equation, divide both sides by a, and we find out that x, this x right over here, is going to be a minus b over a. So at the x value of a minus b over a, we get another point on the parabola, minus b over a c, so that those two points are at the same height. They have the same y value. So when we look at this, uh, this line of symmetry going through the vertex here, then this distance has to be equal to this distance. In other words, the x value of the vertex has to be halfway between 0 and minus b over a. Halfway between 0 and minus b over a is minus b over 2a. So the vertex has to be at minus b over 2a for the x value. We can find the y value by substituting that x value back into the function. So the vertex will be the point minus b over 2a, comma, the y value will be f of minus b over 2a. So there's a summary of those steps that will show up in, uh, in the handout that goes with this video. Um, so. That's how, that's how you find the vertex. It's easy to remember the vertex is going to be located at a minus b over 2a. The y value will be f of that value, and we, and we explained why that's the case. Okay, see you in the next video.